So in this C++ example, we're going to look at how to do math with C++. Now, most of this is pretty straightforward if you've done math with any other programming language in the past. Your addition, subtraction, your plus and minus. Multiplication, division is your star and forward slash. Your modulus operator may be a little bit different depending upon what types of programming languages you've had experience to. With C++, it is the percent sign. So let's look at how this works. <clears throat> now, with C++, your order of operations is the same as you would find in algebra. So we're going to do some math just using C out. So here we have C out, 5 plus 4, and then an end line. If we execute this, we'll get an answer of 9. This is what we expect. If we say 5 plus 4 times 3 and run this, you'll get 17. That's because it's not 5 plus 4 and then times 3. It's 4 times 3, which is 12, plus 5, because multiplication and division are done first. This is also the same with our modulus operator. Now, if you're curious of what the modulus operator does, let's take a look. Let's say 7 modulus 3. Now, 7 modulus 3 is similar to a division, except instead of getting the whole value, we're going to get the remainder. So 7 divided by 3 should be 2 with a remainder of 1. And you see we get 1 as a result. So let's take a look at these different types of things in an actual application how this is going to work for us. Now, there is one thing that we do need to be careful of, and that is our division. C++ has two different types of division, and it all depends upon how we do it. So I'm going to show you those two examples right now. I'm going to take, for example, 9 divided by 5. Now, 9 divided by 5 should give us around a 1.8 answer. However, that's not going to be what it gives us because it's looking at two integers. And so it did integer division, meaning that only it's going to give an integer result. If I want to get a result that has a decimal place, I need to have a floating point number in there like this. Now if I run this program, you can see it comes up with 1 and 1.8, just as I would expect. But it was because I had to put in a decimal number in there in order for it to start doing floating point division. C++ defaults the integer division if it sees integers because that's much faster for it to do. Now let's do some quick examples of how this would work in a regular application. I'm going to find a couple of variables. So I have two variables, start and end, and those are both declared. Now these variables are declared because in declaration, we give a value to a variable. So instead of just setting up a place for us to use in the future, we've actually started using it. And that's the kind of difference between defining a variable and declaring a variable. Let's do a couple other things real quick. I need to set up a duration. Let's assume that how we got this information was based upon a number of seconds in our runtime. So my duration is going to be the end time minus the start time. If I want to figure out how many minutes this was, I can do this with some basic math. Let's take a look at how we're going to do that. Specify our C out command. And I'm going to say duration divided by 60. Duration being the integer, division by 60 is going to give us an integer result. And that's going to specify the number of minutes that occurred. Now we need to find out how many seconds, and we can do that with our modulus operator. I'm going to go to a new line because this line of code is getting a little bit long. Duration modulus 60. And 
and L. So here we're using that integer math to find our duration and get just the integer components. And then we're using the modulus to get the number of seconds or the remainder essentially so we can have a number of minutes and seconds. When we compile our application, it comes back that the duration was 5 minutes and 45 seconds. If I change our end time, for example, 425, and run this again, you see it's modifying our amount of information that we have, just as we expect. And we can practice this with a couple of different results, all depending upon what we're looking for. So this is our basics of how we're going to use math inside of C++ to handle all of our different results, whether it be your standard results, such as addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division, or something special like integer division and the modulus operator. Now, if we need to do something before, just like in algebra, we can change our order of operations simply by using parentheses around our operations. Some developers like to do this around all their operations to, one, ensure that the order of operation is done in the order they expect, and two, to help group things together. That way, it's easier to see that these elements go together, especially on a longer line of code that you might occur. So just a couple things to look for when you're doing math in C++.